Today, I'm gonna to be putting together a Craig router table. What I've got here in front of me is the Craig stand or base, the router table top, and a router fence. So we've got a lot of things to unbox and get together. Seems appropriate to go ahead and start with the base with the steel stand. This is a heavy box with a lot of steel parts in it. We've got long stretchers, short stretchers, uh, leg pieces, height adjusters, uh, feet here, and of course a lot of bolts there to put the whole thing together and the instructions. We begin by putting the bolts through the legs and then through the long stretchers and then threading on the nuts. Then go ahead and do the bottom long stretcher as well. You want to make sure everything is square so grab your square and use it as you're tightening the bolts. I found it handy to have the square on the inside and you could hold it there while tightening the nuts onto the bolts. Go ahead and make sure all the corners are square as you're tightening it. Once you've got both of the long sides done, it's time to add the short stretchers. Same process, putting the bolts through, throwing on the nuts, and then keeping them square as you tighten the nuts down. Same process for all of the short stretchers, keeping them square as you tighten them down. Then once you've got all four done, go ahead and throw on the other side. More bolts and more nuts and keeping it square. Now we're going to add the leg extenders to the bottom and again they go on with a few bolts per leg and it doesn't really matter which holes you use. Now for the feet, first thread on one nut onto the foot, then put it into the leg extender, throw on the other nut and tighten it down. So I've got the stand all put together and it was really straightforward as you can imagine. Uh, it took me less than an hour to get all the bolts uh, tightened up. Started with the sides, got them square, then put the two sides together with the um, short stretchers, bolted those on. When you go and put the um, feet extenders on, just go ahead and take a look where you're gonna put it in your shop uh, to figure out what kind of height you're looking for. And don't forget that the feet themselves will add a couple of inches to that. So then you can go ahead and put the leg extenders on where you want them. And then finally the feet, the leg extenders, uh, I put the bolts kind of wherever there's a whole bunch of holes. So I just threw the bolts kind of wherever they went. Um, I did have to bang a couple in with the hammer. Um, just to get them to go through because it's pretty tight fit uh, bolts coming from both sides but everything went together um, really easily. The last instruction for the stand talks about attaching the tabletop and there are wood screws to put the tabletop on and if you're using your own tabletop you can go ahead and pop that on. I went ahead and opened the Craig Precision router tabletop uh, and took out all the parts and laid them out and looked at those instructions. And there's a few steps to get started on with this top before attaching it to the stand. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Inside the box for the router tabletop, got some uh, insert throat plates, a hardware pack, some more hardware enclosed in here, the uh, router plate for hanging your router and a little guide um, the tabletop itself, obviously, with T-Track here, and the instruction manual. First, we'll lock down the T-Track with a few included screws. Then flip the top over and add the cross support pieces. Then we'll go ahead and add the corner pieces that support the router plate. In each corner piece, we'll put in two threaded inserts that help to level that router plate. Now move the base onto the top and lock it down with 12 screws from underneath. The whole thing is pretty heavy, so you might want to get a friend to help you now flip it over and put it on the floor. Moving on to the throat plate, we want to drill holes to support our router. Go ahead and take the router plate off your router, mark where you want the front to face, and then tape it in the exact center of the template. Take the whole thing to the drill press, line up your router base screw holes, and drill through the router plate. While you're working on the base plate, don't forget to allow any extra access holes that you need for your specific router. Some routers you can adjust from above, uh, and so you might need some access holes for tools going through there. So while you're at the drill press, go ahead and drill them now. After taking everything off, flip it over and countersink those screw holes. 
Here, I'm leveling the router plate to the table. The threaded inserts move up and down, feel right across that joint, and get it nice and flush. Now I'm screwing the plate to the table. These two screws go in fine. These two at an angle, not so much. So I did run into a snag when I was installing the router plate into the table itself. Basically these two screws went in fine, no problem. But these two screws on this side started to go in at an angle and then got caught, got snagged. So I had to take it apart and take a look. Let me show you what the problem was and how I fixed it. If I pop out the base plate here, remember we put these four pieces, one into each corner. These need to sit all the way into the corner. If you look at this piece, there's a small little ridge right here and this registers into the corner of the opening. When you're attaching it, make sure it's all the way up into that corner uh, um, along both sides. Now, I had a problem with the pre-drilled holes that they were pulling this away a little bit from that corner. Just enough that I could see it wasn't registered all the way up in there. And that's why my screw going through the plate was going in at an angle trying to get into that threaded hole. So what I had to do is I had to remount the pre-drilled hole just a little bit. I grabbed a small drill bit, reamed it out a little bit, get it closer to where I needed. And then I was able to put this all the way into the corner and then attach it with the screws, making sure as I tightened the screws, I wasn't pulling it away from the corner at all. It was all the way up in there. And now my router plate goes in fine. So that was a pretty easy fix. 10 or 15 minutes, got the plate in, screws seated well, and we're on our way. The included reducer rings simply pop in and out with the supplied tool. They slide in and just use the tool to rotate it, which locks it in place. And they're already leveled to the surrounding plate. So you're up and running, good to go. To change the ring, pop it back out, get another size, slip it in, and lock it down. Thread the socket screw into the starter pin and lock it all the way down. Turn it over and screw the pin into the table. The router tabletop is all set up, ready to go. Now let's add a fence. Inside the box, a bunch of parts as usual. Big old uh, aluminum fence here, some metal parts, uh, some pieces uh, to go onto the fence, and of course a whole bunch of hardware for attaching everything, and another instruction manual. First, screw down the table mounts using pre-drilled holes from under the top. Make sure to keep it flush at the side and end. Next, pop on four bolts, washers, and nuts into the holes on the table mount, not into the slots. Now slip on the mounting rail over the bolt heads, flush to the back, and lock it down. The clamp block slides onto the mounting rail. Thread two nylon screws into the block until just tight. Then back them off an eighth of a turn. This gives the block nice smooth action. Lock the nylon screws in place with nuts. Attach the fence mount to the clamp block with four bolts and washers, keeping it loose for now. Let's add caps to the fence. Slip in the rivets and give them a tap to drive it home. Make sure the dust port is angled the right way up and attach it with four screws. On the bottom of the fence, measure over four and a half and 12 inches and make tick marks. These are the locations for the bumpers. I found that placing them and then a quick solid tap with a plastic mallet drove them home neatly. Pop screws through both halves of the fence faces and add nuts loosely on the back. Slide them onto the fence, meet them in the middle and lock them in place. Now we'll add the fence to the mount by first slipping in two long bolts and placing those onto the fence mounts. Now thread on washers and knobs, center the fence at the bit opening, and lock it down. Slide the fence to the front of the table parallel to the miter slot and lock down the four bolts that we installed earlier. On the other end of the fence, slide a bolt in the T-slot and into the slot on the right angle bracket. Loosely fit a washer and nut. Now place the brass T-nut underneath the table slot and thread in the extension knob from above. Now the right angle bracket is correctly positioned and you can lock down the nut. Cut the long tape at 17 and 15 sixteenths at both ends. Then lay it down on the fence 1 16th from the edge and secure it slowly, running fingers along to push out any air bubbles. Attach the fence guards with bolts through the T-slots. Then spacers on the bolts, guards, washers, and knobs on the front. 
Install the small tape on the tape slider, but if you do the wrong side like I did, you'll have to pry it back off and flip it over. So make sure you've got the right side up. The slider goes into the mounting rail and locks in place with a plastic screw from below. Finally, the lens goes onto the mounting rail so you can easily view the ruler. And we're done. So there it is, the Craig router table, stand, top, and the fence all put together. Now, it definitely took me a few hours to get all these parts together, but it went pretty smoothly. You saw I did have a couple of snags along the way, but nothing that wasn't easily overcome. The quality of Craig is awesome. Uh, it was really easy to put together. The instructions have pictures. The parts are clearly marked. Uh, so everything was very easy to find which part was to go where, uh, and there was no problem at all there. I love the fact the stand has these leg extenders so that you can really dial in a height that's good for you. This is almost as low as it goes. I put it um, pretty much on the, one of the lowest settings for me, uh, but it definitely can ratchet up even higher. Uh, like I said, everything went together very smoothly. I haven't had a chance to actually pop in the router and turn it on yet. We're going to do that in another video. <laughs>